Hey guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your likes, views, subscriptions, comments. I have enjoyed every single one of them and I really, really had a great time getting to know the KOA community in general. And I know a lot of people have been asking questions and contacting me and messaging me. And I wanted to show you guys our Discord channel. And our Discord channel has all of these topics that you guys are asking me. I have video suggestions, so obviously if you have any songs or ideas, feel free to put them there. Troop Formations, of course, is a very popular one. People think I'm sending just T10, and they're not understanding that I'm actually pushing Formation 1. Formation 1 is an all-tier mix. What you guys don't see is that I don't max my, my Troop Formations. I only put them up to a certain point up until, I think, T9, and I let my T10s be a little bit loose so that I can adjust it depending on what castle I scout. So I try to give a little bit of leeway there. I have, let's see here, battle reports is a great one because, you know, a lot of people, they only have their alliance and their line groups to show their battle reports, but this is like a great place because so many people love to look at battle reports and stats, and I feel like this is another place where you can get advice on your stats, you can, you can see why you lost, why you won, it's just a really great place to have your battle reports shown and shared. And of course, you have the Alliance Conquest, Firelands, um, Trolling. Trolling is always a good one. We have funny Milker pictures. So that one will go on and on. <laughs> He's got a ton. So <laughs> you, have to, you have to join our Discord just for that. And then this is my favorite one. And this one I, is like really dear to me because... I really love to support the community and I I know how hard it is to to do this. It's not easy. It's not just recording something and and boom, you post it. For a lot of us, it's actually a lot of work. It's a lot of time put into editing and putting music on. So this is a place where other YouTubers can come and they're more than welcome and free to share their videos, share their comments, share any sort of constructive criticism. Uh, a lot of people ask for tips, advice. You know, I always say for YouTubers, the first thing that I tell people is, make sure your sound is good. Make sure your sound quality, you can hear it clearly because a lot of times that turns people off. So um, these are just a lot of the people that are in our YouTubing group. And they're just really great people. And I mean, it can just go on forever. I'll try to put all of their links in the description. It might take me a while, but I'm gonna try to do it. So, and of course they get their own, um, their own red color for YouTubers. <laughs> I thought that was funny. So just come and join us. And even if just to say hi to some of the YouTube people that you like and to get advice from, that is one of my favorite rooms. And then, of course, I really like the baby bear memes, but I might be biased. I like this one. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So this is pretty much it. This is our room. Um, and yeah, boosting advice. I mean, there's just a ton of great information here. Okay, so we're in my city, and I guess I just want to do a video answering a lot of your guys' questions and kind of combining them into one video. And a lot of people are asking about the updates and a lot of people are asking about civil wars and they're asking, hey, can you come and help us? And of course, I would love to come and help you, but it's expensive to do that and I wouldn't leave my alliance. So if there's anything that I can do to help you guys in a civil war, it's trying to help you with knowledge that I had to go through when I went through a civil war and got through it on the other side. So the one thing that I would like to show you guys is on your honor. Try to do this every, I think it's like every four hours, but here's the trick. And I don't know if you guys know this trick, but I'm gonna show you. If you go up until this, 359, you see that? There's no cooldown. So now, instead of having to pay gold or waiting for hours, I can just wait every 10 minutes and keep putting donations in. And 
Well, obviously I don't do it every 10 minutes, but I'll wait like an hour or two hours and I can keep donating without having to reach that cooldown. So that will help you get more honor. I really urge you to hold on to all of your honor, as much honor as you can when you're in a civil war, because if you get hit and your troops overflow your regular hospital into your Alliance hospital, you are gonna hurt to try to get all those troops out. I've been there several times, like more than I wanna count. And every time I always say like, I'm gonna have enough honor saved up and I never do. And don't waste your honor on speeds. Don't waste your honor on silly things. Get your gathering boosts in the marketplace get your teleport for 1200 gold in the marketplace if you can be patient and go through all those rounds i think the only thing really worth getting here is your peace shield and i think that's really that's really it so that is my advice for honor now this is something that's very important is your your alliance points so let's see here okay so alliance funds here we go 41 million right when we were in war we almost got down to like 8 million 6 million you don't want to get anywhere lower than 10 million and this is why anytime you go through war it's an emergency so what you need to remember is you need to close your alliance hospital Okay, so you get to see us uh, in Fall and Night crazy action, which is actually kind of boring action. So um, I just want to show you the Alliance Hospital. Now, closing the Alliance Hospital will use 2 million Alliance funds. And this is why I'm saying to keep a reserve of your Alliance funds, because you have to be able to close your buildings. And you can close your hospital, and you can also close your storehouse. So... That right there is 4 million alliance points alone. The reason why I think you should keep 10 million is because of the peace shields. So you just want to make sure that your alliance has enough peace shields if they can't pay for them or buy them. But of course, now that we have these 99 cent deals, I think those are really, really, really good ones. Maybe not the ones from today, but the the ones that have 3,000 gold. I think they're like Saturday, Sunday. So those ones are really good to stock up on because that's a few pea shields a week for a couple of dollars. And of course, um, buying the eight hour ones with your honor is just another option and way to go. War, 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 if we're in a war. What else do you guys need to know about that? Well, since we talked about Alliance Hospital, let's just make sure we're talking about your actual hospitals. Your hospitals should be as high as you can possibly go. Right now, I only have the orange build gear, so it would cost me money to keep upgrading, so I'll eventually get the war Warwolf gear, but right now, it's not important because we're not really at a civil war right now. But I just want to show you this hospital capacity. If you go to, actually, let me click here. So you can see here, 232K troops that I can put into my normal hospital. And then of course our Alliance hospital is 76K, right? So that's a pretty good amount, except if you have millions of troops, that's not. So we're gonna go to this building here and this is the Sanctum. And look at how many troops are here, 1 million. So 1.1 million. So if you see here, if you get a certain VIP level or you get the monthly subscription, it also helps increase the percentage of the souls that go into the Sanctum. And I can just show you real quick here. So you'll see soul conversion 10% and it shows also the Sanctum capacity 100%. And I think they updated the subscription rewards, which is good. I don't ever do this, but you know, if you have millions of troops, it might be worth it. And let's go over to your VIP. And if you look at this VIP, I believe it starts at VIP 10. We can double check. So right here, see how this has zero, zero. So it starts going up at VIP 10, but it looks like it looks like it, it maxes out at 10 and 100 so 
those two are your options to increase your souls. And I think that pretty much covers Sanctum because I don't, unfortunately, have any dead troops. I don't really know the gather speed rate, but I did read here the more troops you have in the Sanctum, the slower Ambrosia gathers for you and the less you have, the quicker. I don't really understand that logic, but hey, it's it's KOA logic, so we'll just go with it. So... Hopefully this will help you guys in recovering your troops and it doesn't make you guys quit because I know a lot of people quit when they work so hard losing 500k, 1 million troops in one hit and I, 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 I love those hits. I love seeing those hits on reports, but at the same time, if it keeps people from quitting and they're able to revive it much easier, I'm, I'm a big supporter on making sure that players that don't spend a lot or free to play players, I really support that they have an option to be able to play and not lose everything because they put a lot of time and work in and the game wouldn't actually work without free to play players or even low spending players. I mean, we need these players in order for the game to work. It's just like a regular ecosystem or environment or economy, you can't thrive with just a oh, top 1%. It's not going to be a good game. You need to have that middle core of people that spend and play regularly, and you need the lower level people too, because they really enhance the game in terms of population, activity, friendships, alliances. I mean, you need players of all types, of all origins of all classes it makes the game better so for those that are really really kind of snobby in in just being the best and having to spend the most and that makes you the best player that's absolutely just false and we really need a game that supports the whole community start with this guy right here this is my go-to guy. He's only a green two-star, but he is a hospital capacity of 24k. And for me, since if I'm in a civil war and I'm worried about the top guy hitting me, I want to have that extra hospital capacity for my T10 to easily be able to reheal again. So that is the only card, I believe, that has hospital capacity. So these green cards have these little gems and I want to make sure that you guys know that. Now, in terms of healing speed, this comes in pretty much all colors. So let's start with, it's Lady Rona. And if you look on two stars, her healing speed is 25%, which is great. Let's move on to the blue card. And I believe the blue card is Sir Gerhis. And in general, this card is amazing, uh, especially for that stamina recovery. But Right here we have three stars, healing speed at 36%. So equip him if you have it. And I believe Helhas is the last one, the three star healing speed at 44%. So that is actually really great. If you have 10 days of, of healing that you need to do, I mean, that's gonna take off a nice little four point something days, right? So that is, the help with the hero cards and then I will show you up here where your talent points matter. So I suggest using this when you get zeroed or you lose major major troops. There's a skill here for healing speed and there's a really good talent right here population surge and that's 25% of the resources needed to train or heal your troops and if let's say you lose a bunch of troops during KVK, you can use this and then use that 300% train buff to retrain all of your troops and it's gonna add up to quite a lot of gold saved, right? And resources saved. And I believe the healing keeps going to two and let's see if it goes any farther. Here's an instant heal of 10% of your wounded troops. So, yep, that's that's it for that but that's a lot that you can save if you get zeroed so make sure 
you go here and if you don't have the gold because it does cost a thousand gold and if you're not VIP 12 to do the the free quick talent switch you can go to spires and you can buy one right here this Lord talent reset and of course I don't recommend you dipping into your alliance funds, but if you have to, because you don't have the gold, then definitely you can get one here. I think it's in the store. Let's see how much. I think it's like 100K honor points. Yep. So you can also go here if you're desperate, but really, really try not to use your honor if you're in a civil war. So I think... For right now, I think because this video is running long, I'm going to wrap it up on just this topic of Civil War being hospitals, right? So we covered the hero cards to help with your healing. We covered hospitals and your capacity. We covered Alliance hospitals. We covered the Sanctum. And we also covered your talent points to redo for healing. And I think the only other thing is maybe what I didn't actually go over is your actual alliance tech. So let's look at that really quick. And here, here we have troop treatment. So alliance hospital troop healing speed 4%. Um, that might be a good one. Like there's very specific ones that have to do with hospitals. So the one that we kept having to do is the building resistance right here because they kept trying to demolish our building and and again it's not going to give you a major major boost but if you stack up all the researches hey it's something right so i suggest just being really smart with what you research but i'll be honest your expansion your actual troop boosts and your rally capacities i would focus on your actual boosts first and then move into more of the economy stuff um, if you're in a war. Again, this is in the mindset that you're in a civil war. So, of course, if you're in a peace kingdom, you know, <laughs> do your economy, have fun at it, like gather away. But just know if you get down the line and you get into a war, just know that you are not going to be prepared. So my whole thing is just be prepared for war always. And just to touch upon what causes war, I think there's like five main points. And I think the first one is always crap talk. And if you are an instigator, just stay out of KC. If you are constantly getting in trouble, stay out of KC. If you are trying to stop a war, stay out of KC. Do everything in PM and stop instigating because... The thing is, is if you stay out of KC, people tend to forget over time if you just stay out. The more you pop your head in KC, the more people remember how much they hate you and how much they want to kill you still. So just stay out, and maybe the KC is going to be a little bit dead, but it's better than having somebody that you hate constantly in the KC. So that is my recommendation, is cut down the crap talk. Number two, principle. If there's anybody that threatens anybody in real life, steals an account, does something that is beyond the game, that also causes wars and people will kill people until they actually leave the game because they cross the line so much that it is somebody's belief system that makes them want to go to war. So we have crap talk and we have principle. Number three, RSS. People that fight over tiles, people that need RSS and farm other smaller alliances, people that have 10 farm alliances and hoard all the level 7 tiles. This is cause for war. We will smack down people that have 10 farm alliances and take all the tiles because it's not fair. So just don't be selfish. Think about your kingdom. There's enough tiles to go around. You don't need to have all your farm tiles like on sevens have your main hive on the tile sevens and put your farm alliances on the six and fives and you're going to stay out of a lot of conflict and i think the other like some smaller reasons is like spires don't hit your own kingdom i mean that is just common sense hit other kingdoms that way if you have to revenge you're revenging somebody that can't hit you back and if you hit people in your kingdom 
Just know the consequence is your castle can get hit, your troops zeroed, and your RSS is farmed. So is it worth it? Probably not. I mean, unless you're doing it as a joke or for fun, go at it. But for spite or revenge, just stay away from hitting people in your own kingdom. It's just that simple. So I wanted to go over emblems with you guys, and it's a really great topic, but I'm actually going to save that for my Discord. So you can join my Discord and you can talk to me about it there because, to be honest, it's a really cool little topic, but it's also kind of involved. So I also want to show you that I'm very, very close to my armor in DS, and I have a song for that, so hopefully that will also happen very soon. So check out the links below for the Discord and for the other YouTubers, and I'll be doing some other Civil War topics, so I will see you guys later.